So good afternoon and welcome to uh, Machine Analysis and Design, MAGR 3221. Uh, my name is Joshua Tarbutton and I will be uh, your instructor this semester. So I just wanted to turn the camera on and say hello and welcome to the class. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the, some of the stuff we're going to cover in the class. Uh, but before we do, I wanted to just give you a quick um, introduction uh, about myself. Um, so um, my name is, as I said, Joshua Tarbutton. I'm 41 years old. I'm an associate professor at UNCC. Um, I spent the first few years at UNCC uh, doing a lot of senior design projects uh, before I came to UNCC, I was at um, the University of South Carolina. I got my uh, bachelor's from Georgia Tech um, and my master's and PhD from Clemson. Uh, I've taught numerical methods, uh, intro to mechanical engineering, which is statics, dynamics, mechanics of materials, thermodynamics. I've taught the engineering solids class, controls, dynamical systems, and signal processing. Um, LabVIEW uh, classes taught system identification, um, uh, of course the senior design, the art of controlling machines, and now uh, machine design. Um, I have done about $10 million in collaborative uh, research uh, for various industries. I have over 50 publications. I have a few patents. Um, and I've graduated a few PhD students, postdoc, master's students. I have uh, five grad students in my group and a visiting scholar right now. Um, four are PhD students, one is a master's student. Um, my work is on uh, going from art to part. So if you can um, imagine one day in the future emailing a uh, CNC machine tool a part and the tool automatically produces it, uh, I'm pretty much working on uh, that problem and uh, we use a voxel framework uh, to try to do that and a lot of our work uh, has uh, been fully funded um, from some of our partners. Um, I'm also a certified scrum master and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. It's a, just a way of managing work um, that I think works a little bit better than some of the more traditional methods before. Um, I was at USC, which I was, I was there for four years. I've been here for four years. Uh, I worked at the Georgia Tech Economic Development Office doing energy audits on manufacturing plants. I worked uh, at Tucker Innovations as a principal software developer um, for mission planning software. I worked for Southern States LLC to do a high voltage circuit switch uh, manufacturing and assembly. I worked as an industry postdoc at in situ tech. Uh, one of our own graduates has a precision engineering company uh, now called IST Precision in Mooresville. I worked there for a year. I worked for a summer at Timken Research. Uh, and I was in the army while I was in school and I spent a year uh, in Iraq <clears throat> delivering uh, water and fuel. So that's a little bit about me, uh, just so you can get some context. Um, I'm also a licensed professional engineer um, in machine design, uh, and I hope to um, use the experience that I've had to hopefully uh, give you a good experience this semester and guide you through the various topics that I hope to cover. Um, we are going to be going... Um, relatively quickly through this class um, and I'm gonna kind of give you an overview of that um, right now all right so <clears throat> just to get started here um, welcome uh, this class is called machine analysis and design and the analysis part is really um, how do we analyze the elements of machines. Um, and ideally, we learn this theory so that we can make good decisions when we design machines. Uh, and we can design machines that don't break. As such, at some universities, they call this the elements class um, as a reference um, because we cover machine elements. Uh, such as, you know, links, gams, gears, shafts, springs, bearings, fastener, brakes, clutches, etc. 
The machine design part of this class involves uh, helping you put things together and make uh, good decisions quickly. Uh, in my opinion, uh, design uh, is really about making good decisions uh, about uh, a product or a problem that you're solving work making good decisions for the solution and if you can make those good decisions early then uh, you should have uh, more profit and higher quality um, and be able to get more done and so um, really the machine design part of this class is to try to get you to think the right way and um, to make good design and hardware decisions uh, as you go along. Obviously decisions that we make are guided by the requirements usually from the customer or the environment or other environmental requirements and constraints um, such as cost and space that the design has to fit in. And those are sometimes interchangeable. Um, Requirements are usually related to performance requirements and constraints are usually uh, related to uh, the space that you have to operate, not the physical space, but really the design space. Um, design is accomplished by uh, learning design is accomplished by actually doing design. And I don't know any other way for you guys to learn to design uh, except to do design and so my focus is going to be on you know teaching the fundamentals exposing you to the hardware and really try to get you to um, uh, be an independent thinker and be able to make good decisions as you go through the design process so when we talk about the design process not everybody has the same picture uh, so I wanted to just kind of walk through the design process according to the, uh, the classical or more classical definitions. Okay. And if we uh, look here, um, we can, that's the wrong one. We can see that uh, this is the uh, design process. This is sort of the, like the standard design process. And <clears throat> you see my mouse here usually what we do is we start off with um, some project definition you know what do we want to accomplish and then it works into the product definition which is you know what is it we want to make to satisfy a problem uh, and then we go through concept designs and then we go to the product development phase and we go to product support so in in at UNCC all of you are probably going through or about to go through a senior design and we have a similar uh, approach to doing that um, in this class we don't talk about design in the sense of where we make sure that we're making the right thing where we um, come up with an elaborate plan for the customers to uh, estimate resources and plan the entire project and we're not necessarily you know identifying customers and figuring out really what they want and then looking at competition. Um, so when we talk about design, we're really talking about um, these later phases of design for this class. Uh, during the concept design phase, you will do this. We have a semester long project, which we'll talk about. Um, so obviously you're gonna go through the steps where you, you know, generate some concepts, you evaluate them, you select some, then you iterate. Uh, and then you um, make decisions and then reply and then you go into the product development where you are actually generating a product. So this box right here, this generate product, um, it assumes a lot. It assumes that everybody knows how to generate a product. But in order to generate a product, product we usually have to make functions in our design uh, that solve uh, problems or requirements or constraints. Okay, and then we have to evaluate the product, obviously, in terms of performance, cost, manufacturability, assembly, reliability, sustainability, etc. Then we go through this. But this little box here that just says generate product, well, well, how do we do that? Well, in order to generate products, uh, good products, we have to have domain knowledge uh, to make good decisions. And so my hope is by the end of the class that uh, this box will be a lot fuller for you and that when you 
go to make a machine, and again, we're talking about mechanically uh, sound devices or engineered devices that are uh, mechanical engineering specific, that you'll be able to uh, generate these product decisions and um, uh, have a good product, etc. Okay, so really, out of the whole design process, although we talk, tell us say that this class is a machine design class, we have to make design decisions that, in order to generate the product. Now, obviously, they have to meet all these upstream requirements for the customer and the actual design. Uh, but this is this is the space that we're going to be right here, uh, where we actually are generating the product. <clears throat> okay. So, um, since this class is a virtual class, um, obviously you can't swing by my office because um, we're uh, in the environment that we are right now. So I have a link here uh, to Calendly that if you click on this link, uh, you'll see uh, different times here. And I've made times uh, for you guys um, for pretty much um, every afternoon of the week. So if you look at the week, um, you'll see that if you click on it, you'll get times where you can schedule to talk to me. Uh, in 15 minute intervals and if we need more we can schedule more or we can um, schedule them at a later date. And, uh, you can pick a time up to eight days in advance. Okay so you see here that I've tried to keep my afternoons open. If I do have a conflict it'll usually show up. Um, and then on Fridays I have from two to four and then uh, the other days I have from three uh, to five. Um, that I'm available to you guys. So um, please, if, if you're stuck, uh, uh, please uh, get to the place where you can ask a question. And if I can help you, I will. We also have a TA. Um, the TA for this class is Chunji Fan. Um, his office hours are going to be on Mondays uh, from 1 to 3, and it's in the syllabus. Um, if Chunji is too difficult for you to remember, uh, he also um, goes by Steve. All right, uh, the textbook that we're using is the sixth edition of uh, Norton's Machine Design, an integrated approach. Um, I have spoken to Norton. He taught this class for, uh, I think, almost 25 years. Uh, I had used a different book um, and uh, was dissatisfied with the lack of emphasis on design. Norton's book uh, really tries to make a concerted effort to help you be able to go through the design process. It's rich with examples, um, and there's um, uh, it's it's in my opinion probably the most comprehensive book available. Uh, that said, there are um, some areas that need to be clarified, and I will try to do my best so that we can go through it quickly. But by and large, we will be going by the book. Uh, in the sense that if we kind of try to cover as many topics as we can and I introduce a lot of different resources, it's n sometimes difficult for everybody to be on the same page. And so we're going to use this book and we're going to um, uh, digest this book so that we have a consistent notation throughout the semester and so that everybody has the same resources. Um, buy the book if you can. I think that the bookstore, I had to update it. They had the wrong book. Uh, I have updated it. Um, get that book or get an older version of the book um, if you need to. The only thing is if you get an older book, you are responsible for uh, any problems I assign from the new version to make sure that they're the same as the old version. I've cross-checked the new book with the fourth edition of the book, and I believe that almost all the problems are the same, but I can't say that. Uh, with 100% certainty, so that's your responsibility. Also get the other recommended text, and I'll show you what those are if you can. Um, throughout this semester, we'll be using, um, we'll be assigning problems where you may not get the solution the first time that meets the requirements. So design, especially in engineering design, uh, commonly we ha it's a chicken and egg problem, and so you have to make some decisions about some geometry to calculate loads. Um, 
And then if you find that those loads don't meet your safety factor requirements, then you've got to go back and change the geometry, which can change the geometry of other components. And so if you don't use software like EES, um, then uh, you're going to have to go back and rewrite your equations a lot. So learn EES um, and install it and use it for your homeworks. We will accept EES. It's also a way for you to check your units because you can put units in there. Um, and it allows you to essentially do your paper design where you, you know, have all your hand calculations um, without having to go back and erase and rewrite things or put stuff. Um, Excel is okay, but uh, really lacks the features that EES has. One of its um, best features is that it can solve nonlinear uh, simultaneous engineering equations. And so you don't have to define everything in terms of the variables. You can really just put all the variables. And as long as you have the same number of equations as you do unknowns, then you get your solution and you can put some initial guesses and you can put your units in and you can convert between unit systems. Um, so I want you to install it. I want you to use it. And I think um, you'll find that it will make your life easier, even though you have to go up the frustrating learning curve of learning yet another piece of software. Okay. <clears throat> so, I uploaded the installation files uh, for you to Canvas. They're actually on the Mosaic Drive, but since not everybody can get necessarily to a campus computer, uh, I went ahead and got all the files. And so um, I'm just going to log in here real quick and off the screen and um, show you where those files are located on Canvas. I gotta do my two-factor authorization here. Okay. All right. So if we go to the course here, uh, this is where you'll probably show up. Uh, you just come down here to your files, and then if you look here, you see we have EES and lecture videos. And I'll put links there on the main page. Uh, but there's three files. Um, if you download all of this, you can double click this file here. It's the installation file. And wherever you install EES, you have to copy this file, the EES.dft, and put it in the folder, the install folder. Uh, so if you do that, then uh, there's only one more thing you need to do in order for it to work. And that is install the VPN client So and log in. Um, VPN is your virtual private network. You've probably had to um, uh, have VPN for other uh, classes. And so you can click on this link and it says, how do I connect to the UNC Charlotte VPN? And it'll walk you through the instructions. But the short of it is you need to download and install Cisco AnyConnect and then put in vpn.uncc.edu and then hit connect and then log in. And then once you're logged in, uh, you'll see something in your tray like this, which shows your the little internet world icon with a little lock to show that you're connected. So once you're connected, then uh, if you double click and you open EES, um, then it'll look to the university and it'll be able to find uh, the license server and it'll be able to run EES. So go ahead and install EES and play around with it. And for uh, more information to get started, go ahead and go to their website. Uh, this chart, this is from FChart Software. Um, they have ebook. The first chapter is actually available, um, and it has most of the stuff that we would use in this class. And then they have a bunch of YouTube videos. So um, I understand that they're dated, and they're EES, uh, which is pronounced, you know, probably. Um, but they're good. Um, so go through them um, and at least be able to input um, equations and play around with it. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Uh, there's also some other videos on YouTube that you can find as well. All right. So let's um, 
talk here uh, for a second about some of my expectations. Okay, so this class, we're supposed to kind of put everything together uh, in terms of statics, dynamics, mechanics, and materials, and some of the other uh, courses that you had. Um, so, and there's a lot of machine elements to cover. And because there's a lot of machine elements and there's a lot of background information that's required, the course is kind of like a survey course of machine elements. And so in order for us to actually um, cover as much of the elements as possible and not forget about things that you might need one day when you're trying to design, my goal is to get through as many of the components and elements as possible without necessarily spending unnecessary <laughs> amounts of time um, going through the detailed analysis. And so we will go as deep as we can go to cover as much as we can go and we will go deep. Um, and so my point is there's a lot of material. It's a pretty fast pace. So keep up. Uh, this is day one and I expect you to start the semester today. Um, the homework is due on the due date. We'll mention this in the syllabus as well. Uh, you can turn your homework in a day late with a 2% deduction or two days late with a 5% reduction. Uh, no homework is accepted after that. Okay, so the homework is due at somewhat aggressive uh, dates. Um, so if you find that you can't keep up that week, then just turn it in a day or two later. And, you know, if you do good work, then you would get a 95% two days later versus a, you know, 100% if you had gotten 100%. Okay, so I won't ding you too much, but uh, you do need to keep up. And one of the ways you keep up is by doing the homework. And um, it is um, it is, it is going to be um, some work to keep up with the homework and the different concepts. So you have to stay, um, you have to stay up to date with the class uh, so that we can cover the material that we need to do in the time that we have. Do your own work on your homework, but feel free to discuss uh, with your peers. Don't allow other people to copy your, your work. Okay. So when you do that, they don't form the necessary neuropathways in their brain that comes from struggling and learning and making those connections. And so if you help them, you're really doing them a disservice. So feel free to discuss with your friends never let the never let them copy your work never share your work without discussing it so go the extra mile if you have a friend who has a question you know say i'll be happy to meet you pull up on um, your favorite online meeting maybe even you know walk through what you did but uh, don't make it easy for them not to think okay so that's everybody's responsibility uh, and also if i catch you cheating uh, we're gonna have a problem um, take home exams are going to be what we do in this class. There will be four of them. You have to work them out entirely of your own, but I'm available every afternoon to help you, uh, should you need help. So you have no excuse to copy other people's work and you'll typically have 72 hours, uh, or so to complete the exam. The exam would probably take you, you know, an hour if, <clears throat> you know, one to three hours, probably if you, had experience doing those types of problems. If it's new and you have to learn a little bit while doing the exam, then it'll take you a little bit longer. Um, and I have some points that we'll talk about for that. There's also a semester project uh, that's 20% of your grade. We'll get into the grading here in a second. And um, your project will not be graded against what I consider a perfect design. Okay, so uh, if, if this was a, a sculpting project, I would not go and compare your work to Michelangelo's, uh, um, David. Okay. For example. So I don't expect you to mm, have a perfect design or even a fantastic, clever design. Um, that's the best that I've ever seen. I expect you to have a complete design and, uh, a complete application of the machine components in the design. 
so that somebody like myself or other engineer that might review your work could take a look at it and say, hey, that'll work. Uh, have you thought about this or what about this? And, and you can make it better. Um, so don't feel the pressure to make a perfect design. Uh, you should feel the pressure to be a solid engineer that makes the right engineering decisions with the knowledge that's available to you at the time. Okay. And so, um, I care more about your learning process and your use of the tools, um, than whether or not it's pretty, if you would. Um, so yes. <clears throat> so, um, the take home exams, you'll be given four. The exams are open ended, um, so no one should have the same answers. Uh, so, uh, if I find two s exams with the same answers, it, which it should be extremely unlikely, um, then, you know, I'll, I'll have to conclude that <clears throat> people work together. Um, you'll have about 72 hours to complete the exams. Um, obviously the exams will take you significantly less, less time. Uh, the reason that we're doing take home exams is because it removes the pressure to crank out answers and get partial credit. Also we're doing machine design and you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for you to pick the right components and put them all together. And it doesn't necessarily take every person, you know, the same amount of time. So for me to test your knowledge, in a 50 or 75 minute class period on a design uh, problem makes no sense to me. Um, so I would like to give you the time that you need uh, to actually do something that is worth your time. Um, I don't really care that you can find the right equation and, and show me how good you are at algebra. I really would like to see that uh, you can make decisions, um, but you need enough time to do that and you don't need the pressure of having to turn it in. Um, take home exams give you that time to think and you know when you do design you really have to have an incubation period so you have to take a step back go do something else get some exercise get something to eat um, and then come back to it and so if I give you a take home exam then it gives you a little bit of space uh, to do that it also gives time for you to learn things that you should know that you don't know um, through asking questions if there's gaps in your knowledge that you weren't really aware of, okay? So that helps with that as well. Um, <clears throat> also, take-home exams gives you time to ask questions to myself or Chunji, and it allows you to do more design-related work versus just, you know, uh, picking some bearing from a catalog or summing forces on some static object that's not moving. Um, I really want you to do well on all the tests. I'd be happy if everybody got an A in the class. Um, and a, But I want you to think. And so um, I've got to give you everything you need to be able to think about the problems the right way. Um, and then I need to give you enough time to put it all together. And um, so that's why we're doing the take home exams. Okay. So I'm gonna, this video is 28 minutes already, so I'm gonna stop it here, and uh, we'll pick back up on this slide uh, in part two of this lecture.